What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have an awesome video today showing you how to compare one category versus all others. This is actually a little bit difficult to explain without a demo, so let's go ahead and dive into it. We see that we have a horizontal bar chart here showing our percent change of sales over our five customer categories. This is gonna be used for our filtering. Then we have a vertical bar chart showing our total sales by those same customer categories. But the trick here is once you click on a uh, customer category on the left side, we are now going to see a bar for our selected category and then a bar for all others. And this is a stacked bar showing the breakdown between the other categories. We see that one bar, it's actually Novelty Shop, makes up the bulk of our sales. So if we go over to the left side and select Novelty Shop, we can now compare Novelty Shop versus the other four categories. And you can also select multiple categories. So if I select Gift Store and Computer Store, They'll get their own individual bars while others only has three categories. And now if I were to click on corporate, we would now have three bars showing the other two. So it is very flexible as well. And I have this bar chart over here just for the filtering purposes, but we can use a normal slicer if we just wanted to look at novelty shop from here. We can visualize the same data. So this is a really cool trick that will allow you to make that comparison very easily. There is a bit of DAX that goes into this method and some disconnected tables. So let's go ahead and dive into how you might set this up. Let's hop on over to another file that doesn't have anything really set up. We have a similar bar chart here on the left and then we've set up this vertical bar chart, but this is just the bare bones. It's just my total sales by category name. So once you click on anything on the left side, it's going to filter down our other bar charts. We don't really have it set up as of yet. So in order to achieve some functionality like we showed in the previous file, we actually need to set up a disconnected table. So firstly, I'm gonna show you the customer category table. Let's go to categories. So this is what it looks like. We have eight different category names. There are only five with sales. So we just need to create a disconnected table to grab these uh, category names. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to new table. And I am going to call this categories plus others. So this is also going to have a row that's going to say others. It's what's going to allow us to show one single others bar. And we'll set that equal to values of our category name column. So let's go ahead and click enter and see what we have. If we click on that table, we now have our category name. It's just a one column table showing our category names, but we also want that others row to allow us to create an others bar. So we can do that by adding one row to this table. So let's use the union function. And let's actually union this table we just created to a single row table which you can create with the row function. And we need to provide the column name, which is category name, but we need to give it the value others. So let's close everything off and we will see we'll have one extra row that says others. So all the categories and others. So let's go back to our visualization piece. And instead of using the category name that comes from my data, let's swap that out for the new category name column that I've just created. So let's throw in category name here, get rid of the previous one. And we can see that this already looks a little bit weird. There isn't a relationship set up between my new table and my original customer categories table. We can see that categories and others is sitting here as a disconnected table. So that's why you're seeing the same value for each individual category. But we do see that others bar already showing up. So now we'll start writing the measure in order to filter this down properly. This first piece of it is going to allow us to compare one category versus all others but it's not gonna be split up in that stacked bar chart. That will be the next step that we'll add. So I'm gonna go over to my measures table. I'm gonna right click, create a new measure. So right now it just has total sales in that bar chart, but we're gonna create a whole new measure. I'm gonna call this uh, sales versus others. And I'm gonna set that equal to some decks. So I'm gonna create a few variables here and then we're gonna add a switch statement to provide some logic in order to show or hide certain data. Firstly, I want to make a variable called current category. And I wanna set this equal to max of my categories and others category name column. So since we put category name from our categories and others uh, table into the axis of our bar chart, this is going to give us the bar that we are currently on in our visual. That's gonna provide some very important information. Then I'm gonna create a variable called selected categories. And this is going to be set to all selected from our original 
categories category name. So it's giving us all the selections that are coming through from the left side here or any filter that's being applied to our original categories column. And then I want to create one more that's called possible categories. So I want to return all of the possible categories that can come through to our visual. So we're going to set this equal to all of that same category name column from our original categories table. And that's all we need for this step moving forward. Let's go ahead and return a switch statement. So if you recall, switch is basically just a better if statement. So this is going to allow us to evaluate multiple conditions and return something if that evaluates to true. So we actually need to say that we should evaluate for true. And let's provide our first condition. So we wanna say if our current category variable is in, our selected categories, we want to do something. We want to simply calculate our total sales, which is already a measure in my data model. And we want to filter down where the category name from our original categories table equals our current category. And remember that current category is pulling from our new categories and others table, which is in the axis. So we are filtering our original categories down based on our current category in the visual. Let's close that off. So that's our first condition. And the only other condition we need to care about is when the current category equals others. And when that current category equals others, we need to apply something similar, but a little bit different. Let's create a calculate function here. Let's pass in total sales. And then this is going to filter down a little bit more specifically. Let's filter down all of our original categories category name column. We only want to show categories that are in our possible categories and and not category category name in selected categories and close that off. Let's close everything off here. And I just want to run you through that one more time. So if the current category equals others, we want to return total sales, but we want to filter down all of our category name from our original categories table. We want to filter down to where the category name is in the possible category. So all the categories we can pull from, but not the currently selected category. So not the category that's coming through to this visual. And once we do that, let's click enter and let's just swap this measure out and throw that in our visual instead of total sales. So let's find that sales versus others in values. So now we have a similar bar chart, but when we click on gift store, for instance, we now have gift store versus others. And you can set the ordering of these. I won't really get into that in this video because it's a little bit outside the scope, but we do already have a working solution without the stacked portion that's going to show us our selected category versus all others. So let's take this one step further and create that stacked piece. There really isn't much more to it, but we do need another table. So let's come back to our data view and I'm gonna create a new table here. So I'm gonna copy that code and I'm going to create a new table and I'm going to paste. And this actually just needs to be called something like categories stacked. And actually I don't need my union. I don't need my second row. We actually don't need an others in here. And I didn't really need to copy that, but that's okay. So I have my category stacked, which is just values of my original categories category name. So let's take a look at that just to make sure we're on the same page. So categories stacked. We just have our possible categories coming from our original categories table. Again, we don't need others in this table. So once we go back to our visualization piece, we can take that new column that we created from category stacked and throw that in the legend. And again, since you don't have a relationship set up between these tables, it's going to look like this where every new category has the same value. So we can show that it's all 74 million for each category. So let's add a little bit extra DAX in order to account for this. So let's click on our sales versus others and expand that down. We need to create one more variable here. That's var current category stacked. And this is set to max of our stacked category name. So this is providing us which current category from our stack table that we're currently looking at in the visual. And then we just need to add a little bit of extra DAX here. So let's do an and and. So instead of just current category in selected categories, we need and also category stacked. So let's type in stacked equals current category. 
So this is going to filter down our first condition even more so that our selected category doesn't repeat multiple times for all the different categories. So before I click enter on this, we can see that Novelty Shop has a bunch of different divisions here, but we only need that to have the one Novelty Shop division. So now that we know our current category stacked, we can set that equal to our current category, click enter, and we should see that Novelty Shop, if we click on that, now only has one bar, so that's perfect. Now we just need to take care of the other section, which is still showing the same value over and over and over. So one last little bit of information here. Let's go back to sales versus others. And let's just add one extra line at the bottom that says and and our category category name from the original table equals our stacked variable. So that's going to filter down that others even more so that we can get an accurate representation of the total sales for each of the stacked current categories. Let's close that out. So that's our entire solution. It's a really cool one, which takes a bit of extra work, but it is a really cool outcome once you have it all set up. So I hope you like this video. If you wanna use the same sample data that I'm using in this method, go ahead and check out my training over at training.bielite.com. Any purchase or access plan will provide you access to the live database that I'm hosting, and you can pull from it to create awesome Power BI dashboards and reports. So I hope you like this video, and I will see you in the next one.